Plumley is a living legend. He is one of the main whistleblowers in the congressional hearings with Frank Church, then in the Iran-Contra hearings in the 80s. And he could not lose his job because he was a legitimate whistleblower, continued to fly clandestine aircraft for the CIA and the Defense Department around the world. He retired two years ago. Facebook.com, Robert.Plumley.5. We'll take you directly to his Facebook or just Google Robert Tosh Plumley. And one of the first things that comes up is his Facebook. We'll tweet out his Facebook at Real Alex Jones. And he joins us now because he's the first person to name names and come out from his Pentagon and NATO source exactly what Hillary was doing. The weapons transfer, how she was using the State Department to ship weapons so that the Pentagon and others couldn't have control and Congress couldn't see it. We now know she had third world dictators giving her money at her foundation that made $2 billion, $2 billion to then take export bans off. We know she sent the weapons to al-Nazra, al-Qaeda, that's now ISIS. I want him to condense and just focus in on the time we have today. I appreciate him coming on. Now Hillary and the secret emails is coming out, and he's got questions for her specifically that we'll get to in the next segment. We've only got a few minutes left in this short one. Uh, but, Robert, i got to tell you, it's good news that Clinton's in so much trouble, and I think they want to bring her down because they know Benghazi's coming out, but that would end up bringing down the whole government, so they want to burn her for smaller stuff ahead of time. What do you think? Well, I, I, think, I think you're right there, Alex. And again, thank, thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir, for uh, your courage. Um, what I think about that, yeah, I think there's uh, getting ready to be a big explosion, uh, not just on the Hillary thing, but all the way back to Benghazi and prior to Benghazi. Um, where I, where I come in, if you remember, we talked uh, about this on your program uh, about two years ago um, from information received about uh, Stinger missiles, uh, about weapons from the direct commercial sales program, uh, and also weapons being pilfered uh, from Libyan bunkers uh, that were going back into the CIA annex um, at, at, at that point. During that time frame, uh, that was partially vetted but not completely vetted like it has been uh over this email scandal with with clinton there's much more than just this email scan, uh, scandal with clinton uh in reference to the international gun running uh that has been going on which eventually involved um ambassador stevens uh and the death or massacre of ambassador stevens and the other uh, of his crew for uh, the information that I had received uh, was covered on your program and other programs and also posted on my Facebook page under the heading of international gun running. Uh, it was alleged at that point that there were Stinger missiles that had gotten into radical hands out of Syria. And uh, that was um, a, a question that was being asked to the State Department at that time through a series of dispatches by the ambassador uh, on what to do about that information, about what uh, what they should do. I mean, you know, so so now what I wanted to bring up here, and I'm trying not to ramble. We'll try to work into this and be a little more uh, concise. There's a thing called SCIF, um, and that's in the Pentagon. And, um, and basically what it is, it's a, like a clearinghouse, like a fusion house. It's a, a SCIF, S-C-I-F, is a sensitive compartmented information facility. All information, for instance, like emails from ambassadors, um, intelligence gathering from whether it be NATO or, or France or Germany or whatever, all this information goes into a SCIF um, or a clearinghouse, like a clearinghouse. Those things are in the you know, in the Pentagon, the White House situations room. All this kind of stuff goes into what they call a skiff. Those things are extremely sensitive. Um, I mean, if you take any information out of a skiff uh, outside that facility, you're in violation, period. It's, 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 it's a it felony. It's espionage. Stay there. You've got experience with this. Walk us through it. 18-minute segment coming up. You're going to have the floor completely, Tosh to lay this out from the inside so people understand 
exactly how criminal Hillary is. And now we know what you said two plus years ago here. It's all Hillary out of the State Department. This is big news, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I look back on some of the guests we've had on. Tosh Plumley in the top five or ten biggest whistleblowers ever. Not just on this show, but in the country's history. I mean, we've had almost all the top NSA whistleblowers on. In some cases, first. And I just think, God, I'm still alive. But it shows how many good people there are in governments, in companies, out there. Most people in the government are very thankful for what Tosh Plumley's doing and for what we're doing. That's why we end up getting the information. The problem is there's bad guys in government. The higher you go, the more of them there are, and they don't like us. The safety, because a lot of people have been killed we, that I've interviewed. The, I mean, flat out murdered. The safety is in getting more people to speak out and tell the truth, and then they can't stop us. That's why they've been persecuting whistleblowers, going after the press so bad the last six, seven years, is to create a chilling effect. Very bold move. But because of political correctness, Obama got away with persecutions of the press and of whistleblowers that Bush could have never gotten away with. I mean, it's been unprecedented. So Tosh Plumley, Robert Tosh Plumley, has laid it all out in articles and documents on his website. But here it is. Foreign governments gave millions to foundation while Clinton was the State Department. And man, I mean, they'd give a million bucks. They'd give $2 million, $2 billion total. And the next week, she'd take an export ban off. Now, who'd ever heard of this export-import, you know, section of the State Department for weapons? Well, you heard it if you listen here. And Plumley said that's how she was doing it. Not just allowing the shipments, she was doing it. So who knows what's in there? And that's why Hillary thought she could get away with this, is that so many companies and others are involved in all this arms smuggling that they're not going to want this to come out. So what does it mean that it is coming out? I'm going to give Mr. Plumley the floor now for the next 16 minutes we have left in this segment to walk through how this works, how these documents go into these clearinghouses, what it means she had a second uh, set of books. Remember, the head of the EPA had to step down over fake email. This is all illegal. Wiping her server is, is obstruction of justice. Uh, now she's saying, oh, it was classified retroactively. All the State Department internal communications are secret. They're all restricted. So, again, she's playing on the public's ignorance. Uh, Tosh Plumley, uh, go ahead and lay it out for us. Okay, well, thank you, Alex. I, I appreciate all those nice comments. Uh, I have been blessed. In some cases, I've been cursed. Uh, sometimes, we know, sometimes we don't want to know the things we know. Uh, they're just given to us. Uh, one of the reasons that a lot of people are coming forward in the uh, past few years is because we have watched us, uh, intelligence sources have watched a slow, steady infiltration, political infiltration, implementing gatekeepers within places like SCIFs and, and uh, uh, DIA and um, uh, various uh, uh, places uh, to suck up and make sure that the general public does not find out the illegal stuff that's going on in reference to international gun running. Uh, there's more money, you've heard me say this before on your program, there's more money in, in uh, gun running than there is in drug running. Um, I've been blessed, as you say, to be on both sides of the fence. Now, uh, when we went on break before, we were getting into a skiff. When I came on your pro program back, I think it was 2013 or 2012, you were one of the first programs that I made the allegation that uh, there were Stinger missiles missing from our arsenal. I made the allegation that there was high-impact weapons in, in Libyan bunkers uh, that were not secure. I made the allegation at that point in time uh, that, uh, uh, and it's recorded before the fact, and I did that for my own protection before the fact, because sometimes sunshine is the best uh, uh, defense people like me and others uh, have. But at that point in time, the ambassador was also aware of this information and was sending a series of emails back and forth but to the State Department. Now, the information that I had uh, given to your program was obtained from a very sensitive NATO, or three very sensitive NATO sources uh, in uh, Ukraine, or around Ukraine. Uh, and it involved these Libyan weapons uh, that were getting pilfered onto the black market and involved some of the Stinger missiles. I um, 
publicly went out and said that before the fact. Now, the way it works, that information had already been filtered back to the proper agencies, and it was within what they called a skiff. Um, now, a skiff is like a fusion center, a, a civilian fusion center, except a skiff is a DIA, Pentagon, military, whatever. And it's like a clearinghouse where all information uh, uh, worldwide goes into different compartments. Uh, and SCIF simply means it's uh, S-C-I-F. Uh, and it's a sensitive, com compartmented information facility. It's a facility. It's an intelligence gathering facility. Now, those facilities are so secure that even if you misplace your badge and you can't swipe to get into that, that deal, you've got to go through hoops, I, unimaginable hoops from different people in security. In other words, you've got to go to the security office. You've got to talk to this guy. You've got to do that. You've got to explain to them why you don't have your badge. You've got to explain why that badge does not work. I mean, uh, before you can even launch and get inside that skiff. Now, also, when you get ready to complete your tour of duty for that day, that hour at that skiff, you are cleared out of that skiff. If you take, I mean, they look in your, I mean, they look in your your pants. In some cases, you've got to unzip your pants to a, a security agent if he wants you to do that to make sure that you're not stuffing like a fawn, uh, whatever, uh, uh, putting stuff in her brazier when they were working in the, her and Ali and Ali North were working in, uh, inside the Pentagon. So you can't get stuff out of a skiff. If you do, or you even attempt to, you're immediately in violation of security. And if you have a security clearance, even without due process of going to court, that security clearance is immediately pulled at that point in time until you can substantiate and prove to security that you're not doing espionage or you're not taking that information out to sell it or divulge it to the media or whatever. I would say if they even suspect that that's what you're doing, your security clearance at that point is suspended. Now, what does this mean as far as Hillary Clinton? Uh, I have no axe to grind, grind against the Clintons. In other words, I'm not political. I, I could care less, you know. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I could talk about it. I could, but that's not what I'm here for. I'm going to try to stay focused on this one thing. Information came to a skiff. Now, I'm going to pull it back to you and I. I came on your program and I released information that was currently going to skiffs, but it hadn't got there yet. In other words, I jumped the gun. I got the NATO information before my sources said, hey, we're going to make our classified field reports, and you know what happens from there. Yes, I do. You won't believe what's going on over here, Tosh. We have C-130s on a daily basis coming in with tons and tons of arms and ammunition that are being assimilated out into bunkers in Libya. Wow, I thought, this, well, I thought they were already in bunkers. They're telling me that this information is going to CIA safe houses in Jordan, Turkey, and uh, Pakistan. I'm thinking, wow, man, I, I, can't, I can't report this until I know specific. You've got to give me more than just what you say. Well, a few days later, it came out. I came on your program, and... It was not released at the skiff first. You were the skiff that that information was released to. You and three other alternative media programs, that information was released at that point in time. If I had still had a security clearance, at that point right there, my clearance would have been lifted. In other words, I would have been in trouble. I would, have, I would have had to stand in front of the attorney general and explain my actions of why I talked to you. Now, that was an allegation. It was not, some of it wasn't proven at that point in time. That's two, that's two years ago. Now, I don't want to run you over time here. And I don't want no, to no, keep going. Over. It's more than two years ago. You, you're on record. But, but please continue because getting into okay. now Hillary's house of cards is coming down. Uh, it's now in the news that Obama well, is torpedoing her campaign. There's infighting going on. All right. Now, at the same, same time that this information was going, the attorney general and the DOJ was persecuting people for misplacing emails. 
So classified emails were being misplaced or sections of those emails were being uh, recapped to friends just in general conversations, and they were brought to trial. One of them is doing three and a half years in prison because he released a sensitive email that was, uh, had been classified by a skiff. Now, if I had taken servers home during my career and put them in that deal, I was immediately supposed to notify security and they were supposed to take the secret service out to my house and make that house classified as a skiff in order for me to be able to have that information in my possession at that particular house, whether it be on a non-classified server or even a government server. In other words, security had to be set up at my house in order to have that information at that location. My question I'm leading up to is why is there a double standard in the security apparatus of this country that allows people, and I'm not going to say just Clinton, I'm going to say others. Petraeus got in a lot of trouble because he took a bunch of uh, 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 printed documents and put them in a uh, drawer, and they used a a, a sexual scandal and those uh, deals to bring that man down and destroy his whole career for the rest of his life. Over what? He had a few papers, maybe 100, maybe 500, maybe 1,000, maybe a whole damn book, or maybe just one paper. But the point is, He had them in an unsecure facility. They were not in a compartmentalized security. They were scattered. Now we come up here and we've got a very high echelon, a secretary of state that now is sort of claiming someone else did this. She didn't know. Look, I I testified and I was warned. Mr. Plumley, if you discuss this outside this room, you will be charged. They even tried to file a charge on me when I was going to write a book, and that was way many years ago in 1980. And I was going to write a book called The, the Black Knights of Cuba. And then I was going to write a book called Deep Cover Shallow Graves. I was, and then I was notified, you've got to turn that manuscript over to them so that they can review it and redact because you're giving up methods and procedures and you've taken things out of the skiff that you wasn't authorized to do. Mr. Plumber, you're going to go to jail if you continue on this road. Now, I don't want to get all hypered up here, but I also got IRS down on me for a total of 10 years because I was messing with skiff stuff, classified information. In other words, I testified to committees. In other words, the committees had classified my testimony top secret committee sensitive. And that meant that when I went back to review a year later, to review to make sure and initial each paragraph that that information was right. They told me I couldn't see that information because it had since been classified and I didn't have a clearance. So therefore, I was gagged. If I went out and talked about what I had done uh, through Iran-Contra, the tail numbers, the aircraft numbers, working with Barry Seal, working with all kinds of different people, talking about San Alina, Costa Rica, I just violated a whole bunch of them just now. So, you know, I mean, what, what does all that mean? It, it means Hillary that, Clinton thinks she's above the law, but obviously she isn't. And when you talk about the State Department and arms smuggling and that Hillary was involved, that has now, years later, all come out. This is a big, big deal. And then you've got questions for Hillary. We should go over some of these questions, uh, Tosh. Good. Appreciate that. Yeah, you, you do them. I don't have my copies here because I can't get on. All right, well, they're up on your internet. Facebook. Uh, let's go over some of these some of these questions. Ms. Clinton, while you were Secretary of State, were you aware that the U.S. weapons were being obtained from U.S. arsenals and Libyan bunkers and being transferred to CIA contract employees in Jordan and Turkey? Number two, were you, Ambassador Stevens, and the U.S. State Department aware of U.S. weapons? Uh, It continues, um, were you, Ambassador Stevens, and the U.S. State Department aware U.S. weapons were being pilfered from those stockpiles and being sold on the black market in Libya? effectively falling into radical factions operating in and out of Syria. Number three, were you aware that Ambassador Stevens was concerned about the loss of American weapons? And if he mentioned this in a series of dispatches to the U.S. State Department while you were Secretary of State, you go on to say these are some of the main questions. Uh, Why are these the most important questions, Tosh? 
Well, those are questions that are embedded within that skiff that I made reference to. So a question is, if she says yes, or if she says I cannot answer those, those are a matter of classified, that's classified information, or just a flat standard answer, I can't answer that. I can't answer that. I can't answer that. Why did you take that questions home with you? Why did you take that sensitive information that you just admitted by not answering yes or no to those three questions, let alone the 11 Benghazi questions? Why is it that uh, you can't answer those three simple questions, yes or no? Did you know that Ambassador Stevens had contacted the State Department requesting what he should do with the information that he had received that radicals out of Syria had just received 400 Stinger missiles from the U.S. arsenals that were shipped on C-130s to the Middle East. Now, if they say, oh, well, that's an allegation, get the flight plans of the C-130s and the refueling from the uh, 339th or or, or whatever. I just did something there I shouldn't have done. But uh, there are a lot of things I shouldn't have done. But um, get uh, ask those questions. If she said no, and later we find out through the emails, when they're going to be scrubbed. I mean, they've been scrubbed, but they're going to be found. There's going to be enough information come out that at least will point in that direction that she did know, and she took that information home. So she can't answer that as uh, classified. Uh, did she make the judgment that that question is a classified question? If she had that kind of sense, then she can't. How can well, she obviously, that's why the head of the EPA had to resign was using a dummy email and and gnome to plumes. I mean, Hillary did the same thing with code names. She was doing illegal activity, and who knows if these are even all the emails that they say they've turned over and it's all scrubbed. I mean, right there, she is as guilty as a cat caught in the canary cage. Let me ask well, you this: When we come back, Tosh, we got to go to break. Okay. Why so. do you think they're going after? Her? I mean, I think. They're going after on smaller things, you agreed, because they know the big stuff's about to come out. I know you still talk to folks inside these different agencies. What's their take on this? And we'll do a little bit of overdrive as well with Robert Tosh Plumley. Uh, we'll also tweet out at Real Alex Jones, his Facebook, where this is all located, the articles, the documents, and more, so the radio listeners can follow along with what we've been showing on TV. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones. There is no doubt that the people that have taken over our government, criminal elements, are trying to set up a domestic police state. They're trying to set up a system to take out constitutionalists, not liberals, not conservatives, but people that understand that we're under social engineering and that it's classical tyranny. We're going to do 20 minutes of overdrive to take your phone calls for questions for Robert Tosh Plumley, the guy that blew the whistle on Benghazi from high-level sources in NATO and the Pentagon and everything he talked about. It's actually about three years ago, and then again two years ago, has now all come out. Colonel Schaefer also, about two weeks after, said it was missiles and an arms deal. He got called in and threatened to be basically arrested. I'm not even supposed to even get into all this. Um, but a lot of threats have been thrown around about this. So it's Tosh Plumley. Colonel Schaefer's been willing to talk about it. But the good news is there's a lot of people behind the scenes that are talking about it. We only got a minute or two before break. We'll come back and you'll have the floor and then take calls. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231 on Benghazi. But in one minute, Robert, why do you think it looks like they're getting ready to bring down Hillary? As the fall guy to cover up the larger Benghazi? Well, okay. Um, I, I'm not a conspiracy person, as you know, um, Alex. But, okay, they're throwing Hillary Clinton under the bus. This is a dog and pony show that we're, the American people are being fed. It's straight a dog and pony show. This is a diversion. Uh, the emails and all that and her uh, uh, violating the law. Uh, there was a, an end time, the Attorney General and uh, the Department of Justice, especially the FBI, they will get to the bottom of that. And then, it, then it's all over. But right now we're being fed a dog and pony show. And the secret government is throwing Hillary Clinton under the bus in order to cover up the Benghazi situation. The Benghazi situation... Stay there. Back in 70 seconds, Tosh. You'll flesh it out. Straight ahead. Some stations don't carry it. Infowars.com forward slash show to find the free...
Your chance to talk to Robert Tosh Plumley, 800 259 9231. I'm glad that our reporters realize how big this interview is. Leanne McAdoo is host of the Nightly News tonight. She just ran in here and said, Can you ask Robert Tosh Plumley, who got cut off by the break, to you know repeat that so there's not music playing over it? Absolutely. Uh, you know, to restate what he said. I had asked the question, uh, and I'll do it again right now and go to him. Robert, they're clearly throwing Hillary under the bus now. Um, now they're saying in the Washington Times, Obama is, quote, torpedoing her campaign. I think she's a vile, horrible person, but clearly you're non-political. You've said you want the truth of Benghazi to come out. A, do you agree with me uh, that it looks like she's in deep trouble and they may, uh, may be getting ready to flush her? And then B, why would they be doing that right now, Tosh Plumley? Well, well, okay. Uh, we're in a diversion right now. Zeroed in on uh, Clinton and emails, the emails that were taken, classified emails that were taken out of the deal. The reason that they're zeroing in on this dog and pony show and uh, and the Trump and all this and stuff is simply for one reason, my opinion, and also documented. The Benghazi murder massacre was only because the ambassador found out about a very secret international gun running operation that it involved U.S. Stinger missiles, and he had the opportunity to purchase those Stinger missiles back to get them off of the, uh, uh, the international market. Uh, so he could buy those Stinger missiles back. This is classified information that I'm talking about. This is the kind of information that is in those skiffs. Now, he had an opportunity to buy that, that back. So they was told to stand down. Shortly after that, he's dead. The reason that she's being thrown out of the bus and the reason for this diversion is that they will not let us get into the fact that the ambassador had uncovered this gun running operation and was asking the state, U.S. State Department how he should handle it. What should he do with this information that he had received from on the ground, boots on the ground, informants, some of them American, some of them NATO. If you remember, NATO went into those Libyan bunkers to clear them out. Where did that where did that uh where did those weapons go and what were those weapons? This is what they don't want us to know. And you also so use the term secret government. Uh, repeat that. Talk about the secret government and, and how it operates. Well, uh, we have a segment <laughs> and I don't want to get into conspiracy stuff and so on like that, but we have a situation that goes all the way back to, to before Kennedy that has been gradually, I call it the American slow coup d'etat. We have a, a, an element, uh, whether it be international, whether it be whatever, and I don't get into all that kind of stuff, but we have a, a, a situation that has been developing for years, a slow and gradual infiltration into the CIA, into uh, uh, various uh, political organizations, uh, and it is like a secret government within itself. They manipulate. They are the gatekeepers. They stop information like what I'm talking about. They tried to stop me for a lot of years, uh, you know, but that's the problem right now. So now this situation of, of uh, exposing this gun running operation that goes all the way back to at least Iran Contra, and that's what Iran Contra is, same MO. You get an operation going, you, you operate it, you t uh, tweak it, you dust it off, you put it on the shelf, and then at the proper time, you bring that operation back, you modify it a little bit, and you put it back out in the field for operatives like me to carry out or others. So, again, back to why you asked me what they're doing. They're throwing Hillary under the bus. They're giving us a dog and pony show. They're contaminating. Uh, they work for our news sources. They won't let senior editors ask certain questions. The three questions that, you, that I just asked to ask Hillary Clinton, why doesn't our mainstream media just ask her those three sure, questions? Sure, this is obviously the scandals tied to Benghazi. Why won't they put the horse with the carriage? So so to sum it up, what you just said, to sum it up in one sentence, the cover-up is international gun running into Benghazi that got an ambassador murdered. Ma not murdered, massacred. Massacred. All I right, mean, stay there, Tosh. We're coming back with phone calls straight ahead in Overdrive, Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com. Robert Tosh Plumley is our guest. I want to go to loaded phone calls for him here in just a moment. Former CIA contractor, whistleblower on Benghazi. Other points you'd like to add before we go to these calls, Robert? 
Well, just uh, other than to uh, sum it up, that uh, we talked about this as an allegation, what, three years ago, two and a half, three years ago. And now it's all those allegations from two and a half, three years ago that was out here on your program have now been confirmed uh, from more than one source, from multiple sources, and including mainstream media, who has been extremely reluctant over the years to even touch this stuff because of gatekeepers that imposed upon them as senior editors that keep good reporting reporters from doing their job, reporting this stuff. This information that I'm talking to you on your camera, eyeball to eyeball about, has been out there. It's been out there for three years. It's been vetted. It's been vetted by military sources and pilots that actually flew those guns and ammunition to Jordan and Turkey and the CIA annex and Libya. Uh, Jim Mars, a good friend of mine, uh, uh, has written about it. He was on your program. We talked about it. Uh, the direct commercial sales program has been uh, a cash cow for political interest in this country. A lot of people don't know what the direct commercial sales program is. Well, it's got to be great for her. She runs the State Department. Uh, that's third world countries, foreign countries, dictators pay her money to her foundation, and then she takes the restriction off or secretly ships the weapons. Well, here's the deal. Right. And that uh, she uses that as, a, or they, somebody uses that as a cutout. But the point being is those weapons. Or, uh, and the direct commercial sales program and the Blue Lantern report that authorized uh, weapons sales to foreign countries is controlled and monitored by the U.S. State Department. So therefore, when, when someone makes an application to ship high-impact weapons from the U.S. arsenal, they have to get approval. There's forms to fill out. Uh, foreign interest are involved. They have to make sure they're not uh, uh, tied with a foreign country in order to get approval by the State Department to ship those arms out of this country or, or take those arms out of our, our arsenal. In this case, we ship hundreds of thousands of arms to Libya. When the Libya fell, those arms are in bunkers. We sent, according to the Washington Post, confirmed what I told you, we sent CIA contractors to those safe houses, to, rem uh, uh, to the bunkers and the safe houses, to remove those weapons. What were they trying to remove them for? I mean, why didn't they, did, why didn't they same C-130s? Why didn't those C-130s fly those weapons back to this country instead of taking them to the CIA annex and then also putting them on a ship from, Lib uh, from Tripoli uh, and going into radical hands? For instance, John McCain, and I have nothing against John McCain. Real fast, I know we're on time element here. Yeah, he's attacked but, you. Yeah, he attacked me right out, uh, uh, saying something about I said uh, when a, when the question was raised about missiles. Uh, oh yeah, he also said pigs fly and the sun rises in the west. Okay, I didn't attack that man. Oh, well, so why did that man make a statement? But two weeks, here's the facts. Two weeks after that, photographed in brand new. Toyota pickup trucks with a 50 caliber machine gun mounted on the back, slinging a, uh, a U.S. made Stinger missile over their shoulder, flying the ISA flag. Now, wait a minute. Come on. I didn't never say pigs fly in the sunsets in the West. I said simply this ISA has Stinger missiles, and they got them from Libyan bunkers. Period. Now, that should have been investigated. What, by the U.S. State Department. Well, it just I shows that they think if you're the attorney general or the vice president or the president or the secretary of state, you're allowed to commit crimes out in the open, and they're not invincible. It's, it's like Nixon said, well, when you're president, something's not illegal when it's normally illegal. Well, that was proven wrong right there, and I think if Hillary falls, it's, it's going to spread to others. I don't think they're going to be able to compartmentalize it, but I think they want to discredit her in case she shoots her mouth off, but... We'll see what happens. Let's go to some calls. Let's okay. talk to Wild Man in Texas. You're on the air with Tosh Plumley. Go ahead. Uh, thanks for taking my call, and God bless you both. Thanks to you all both for what you do. And uh, as a matter of fact, I think the United States is in the toilet bowl and uh, vortex of the toilet bowl flux as we speak, and it, it's like a giant alcoholic, and it's not going to get any better until we hit bottom. But my question for Mr. Plumley is, in the Benghazi murders, uh, at the hand of behest of Hillary Clinton and all the weapons that were took from those warehouses a few months ago, you was on Alex's show and you said you was going to go investigate the two training camps that ISIS has across the southern border in Mexico. And I was wondering, do you think that any of those weapons that was took from them warehouses ended up down there that will end up across the border here to be used against us? Well, okay. Uh, 
wild man from Texas. You're not one of my relatives, are you? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, okay. Back when we had this great big other diversion about uh, uh, little kids coming across the border and all this kind of stuff, that was a diversion to take our, 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 us away from uh, Fast and Furious. Uh, the training camps, what, what I meant about that was more than actual training camps, is that there was infiltration from Somalis coming across through the southern borders from Mexico and Guatemala, and they were bringing some of these pilfered weapons in through Mexico into the United States, into CIA safe or into uh, ISA safe houses that was operating in Atlanta, Georgia, and Las Vegas. That was the story at that time. If you notice, it did not go anywhere because it was overshadowed about little kids that was bringing hoop and call. Sure, and by the, the way, United Joe States. Biggs got visited by the FBI, a reporter. They said they find the reports of Judicial Watch, who has the documents, very credible that there are ISIS bases over the Texas border, like you said, to fund operations with human smuggling as a business and weapon smuggling because ISIS is an organized crime system. Well, that's 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 what's happening. Uh, we have breadcrumb. ISA has breadcrumb strategic places throughout the world that is just like the the Underground Railroad back in the Civil War days. Uh, you pass on, pass on, pass on. You break weapons down. You send them by piecemeal through little kids and backpacks. You send them with the drugs. Uh, well, I take that back. You don't send them with the drugs because they're zeroed in on those drugs so much. They tell them by other ways. They just drive them across the border. You can't get a 50 caliber machine gun out of the United States and drive it across the United, uh, Mexican border into Mexico, but you can get a 50 caliber machine gun out of Mexico into the United States. Listen to this. Extremely easy. Joe Biggs and our reporters were down there just in, on July 23rd. And they were down there right on the Texas border and a truck with like 10 different packages, probably marijuana, but it could have been weapons, anything, huge boxes, just loaded in a truck and drive away. And right as the drug truck comes up, the Border Patrol is parked 100 yards away. They drive off the other way. And Joe Beggs said it looked completely staged. Well, there's there's all kind. Of, now we're getting off into other things. That, but yes, there's all kinds of uh, things. But Border Patrol is... They have their hands full. There's damn good people in Border Patrol. In fact, no, I know there is, but we also we, know some have been paid off. Yeah, oh, yes, 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 sir. And there's a lot of them right here out of Las Cruces and, and around in Santa Teresa and others that are damn good. And they they weed out their own. And there's also down in Piedras Negras and the Falcon Lake situation. They know what's going on down there. They they understand that exactly. Uh, we had a meeting with uh, intelligence unit here for the sectors. Uh, two years ago, it was written up in SalemNews.com uh, about having a meeting with them to talk about exactly what we're doing right now. We warned them at that point that drones at that early date, three years ago, was carrying weapons across the border, dropping them. They wasn't carrying just drugs on, on and dropping them. They were using ultralights and all kinds of different things uh, uh, to pick them up and drop them across the border. We lost a very good Border Patrol guy by the name of well, we know who who who, who Terry was, uh, and uh, well, it, it, it's uh, and and the Peck Canyon massacre, I call it. I mean, good gosh, we could go on and on and spend hours and hours and days of talking about what's been going on on that border, and then that leads us into the political side of it and building great big walls and all that kind of stuff. But the point is this. Weapons have been coming, not going from Mexico, I mean from the United States to Mexico. they have been weapons coming from the Middle East through Guatemala, through Mexico. Sure, Fast and Furious is a distraction. Yes. Yeah, small arms but, from the U.S. going into Mexico. The drug cartels mainly, for whatever reason, have a fetish with German weapons is what I've read, and that's what they're buying is full auto they're not buying German full auto at gun shops here in the U.S. The point is this. They're stashing these things, and they've got training sites. If you want to call them training sites, it could be, or they're flop houses, or they're safe houses, and they're getting ready to do it. Whenever it is, intelligence will tell you that. The information that I'm telling you right now is being assimilated in those skiffs that I mentioned earlier on your program. This is not supposed to be out to the American people. And you know why? Oh, they can't handle the truth. We That's right. We're skipping this break, up. going to the bottom of the hour in overdrive. Frank in Florida, thanks for holding her on the air with Tosh Plumley. Thanks, uh, Wild Man. I'm sorry I didn't mean to get off on that. No, you answered his question well. Go ahead, Frank.
Yeah, Mr. Dumley, I uh, definitely want to tell you it's a great honor. Uh, I do have a question for you, and then I have some major intel I wanted to go over off air with somebody from your staff, Alex. Uh, the question I have for you, Mr. Dumley, is or Mr. Plumley, excuse me. Um, no in, in my upbringing in New York, I had the chance to run across several people that, on various levels, have been in close contact with the Clintons over the years. Uh, what I'm getting from somebody very deep inside, close to them, is that the uh, most potential damaging information within uh, the emails that have been seized, or at least what they're looking for, has been satellite imagery as well as drone footage that followed the importation of the weapons into the Benghazi area, as well as everybody involved in the handling of them, as well as what they dubbed later on as being the protesters, which did lead to uh, Ambassador Stevens' unfortunate end. I just was curious in your circles if you've heard anything of the same. Well, when we're getting into satellite, uh, SI satellite imagery, um, there was a lot of satellite imagery uh, about weapon shipments going back and forth across the borders into Benghazi. In fact, uh, the ambassador was responsible for alerting the State Department to that satellite imagery. Uh, that's what, in a way, is what uh, started all this stuff. And so that's why uh, they sent the local security force that, that they admittedly had hired, Al-Qaeda, to kill him to get rid of the evidence because they wanted to launch the next phase, bringing down Syria. He was told to stand down on the information that he was passing to the State Department, and I well, the question is, who in the State Department told him to stand down? Gee, I wonder who was heading up the State Department. Well, uh, and also weapons shipments, and then also you look at uh, 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 campaign, con well, campaign contributions. I may I slid a little fraud in slip there. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. But follow the money. Um, if a person can get $2.5 million for talking, why aren't I getting two and a half million dollars for talking to you? Uh, you know, I mean, a speaking engagement and all this kind of stuff. Why is it that secret monies uh, in uh, slush funds and secret bank accounts uh, being filtered and, and cut out and going like that? What I'm, what I'm trying to say, and again, I'm going to qualify. I don't have anything I ask to grind against the Clintons. Oh, it's, it's an operation. It's been an operation that's been going on for a long time. There's more people involved in this than just the Clintons. Or and then Hillary Clinton. The point being is that there's corruption at the highest levels, highest levels, and they will sacrifice their own just like a wolf gnawing his leg to get out of a trap. In other words, that's where we're at right now with the Clintons. We got we got them fighting among themselves, gnawing at her leg to put her under the bus in order to save one thing. What's the motive? Follow the money and also to stop what the ambassador had already reported to the State Department through proper channels that there was Stinger missiles going to the radicals in Libya. Out of, uh, in well, what are they going to do when that, the Al-Qaeda people, who we know are wind-up toys of the shadow groups that they use to take our liberties, they use the threat to take our liberties, what are they going to do when they start shooting down Western airliners? How are they going to cover that up? Claim the Russians did it or something? Well, sure, there could be another diversion to that. I mean, uh, that could happen any time now. I mean, look, a Stinger missile shot down one of our helicopters and a lot of good men got killed. Okay, that's pushed under the rug. It wasn't a Stinger missile, it was an RPG. Wait a minute. Anybody that's been in the military that's ever fired an RPG knows it's damn near impossible to shoot a moving target, especially a helicopter with an RPG, even if the helicopter's flying 200 feet off the ground. I mean, that's a, that, that's a phenomenal feat and would take someone that has been highly trained on an RPG in order to be able to pull that feat off. So it was shot down by a Stinger missile, and the ambassador knew it. He reported it. It went to, quote, quote, a skiff, like a clearinghouse, to be evaluated. Was it, had it, did it have any merit? Was, it, was, was the missiles, were, were there any missing missiles? How come the missiles were photographed in the back of trucks? These are things that intelligence officers and intelligence people... How come decide... ISIS is in U.S. Special Forces Toyotas fitted here in the United States by the hundreds? Uh, how come they're driving around in U.S.-made MRAPs, which the Iraqis didn't even have? How come they've been photographed with the Stinger missiles uh, in the back of trucks? Exactly. They were supplied by the State Department to be the Army... Uh, of the Saudi Arabian takeover. 
Well, the State Department would use a cutout on that. In other words, but the point being, it was approved by the State Department to go to a subcontractor or a series of subcontractors to carry out and implement to get those you know, deals in there. It's a money deal. It's not that they're saying, okay, we want to support ISA to overthrow and cut people's heads off. No, we can make $500 million if we let them have that Toyota truck and if we let them mount that 50 cal or if we give them those Stinger missiles. The ambassador wanted to buy back those Stinger missiles for $50,000 a missile, and he was denied. In other words, he would stand down. No, I hear you. That is just insane. Uh, I mean, it's... Well, and who did that? The State Department did that. Now, is, did Hillary Clinton do that? I don't know. But ask her those three questions, and if sure. she says yes sure. or no, or they're classified, then I want to know why the ambassador exactly. was killed. Let's move quick now. Thank you, Frank. Good points. Anthony in Florida, you're on the air. Quick question. I want to get a lot in now. Okay. I'm sorry hey, for hello. rattling. No, no you're great. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just have a question for Tosh Plumley. What is his thoughts on the fact that Nate, it's pretty obvious that NATO is trying to pick a fight with uh, Vladimir Putin, um, trying to start a, or trying to basically reigniting the Cold War? Because as far as I'm concerned, they um, they can't sell us this fake war on terror. And so I was wondering, what is his thoughts on on the on them trying to pick a fight with? Sure, uh, the new Cold War with massing troops and weapons. All around Russia right now. That's official. Thank you, Anthony. Good question. Tosh? Very good. Uh, Anthony, everybody right now, uh, international saying, is jockeying for position. <laughs> That's a whole thing. Why are they jockeying for position? Again, it's a money deal. Uh, the IMF, whatever you want to call it. So is Putin starting a war with NATO? Is there Ukraine? I mean, uh, uh, is... Uh, but when you get all through whatever their motives are, the bottom line is... Follow the money. Russia is broke. The United States is broke. The only way to solve being in poverty as a nation is to start a war, start a brush war, sell the weapons. That's where the money comes from. In other words, uh, the reason they got into weapons and drugs is that there's a hell of a lot of money in drugs that can buy the weapons. But when you can buy the weapons and, and triple your money on the black market, it doesn't matter. Politics doesn't play in that. Oh, sure. Well, it's not, one thing to sell AK-47s to Al-Qaeda. That's bad enough. To give them Stinger missiles just shows this elite is completely out of their minds. They'll never cover that up. Thank you so much, Tim. Great question. Uh, or did I just hang up another caller? Is Tim next? Tim in FEMA Region 9, go ahead. You're on the air. Hello, Tosh and Alex. Um, I'll make this quick. Um, um, I was in Israel from 74 to 80, and I'm just saying that I was working there. When uh, we came across uh, information on Red Eye and Stinger missiles, close to ten to 15,000 of them that had been brought into Libya, which subsequently wound up in, uh, in Afghanistan um, when, uh, when the Russian forces were there. And we turned all that information over uh, to the Mossad and Sheen Bet at that particular time. But it was, uh, so this has been going on for close to 30, 30 years or more. And if I can state one more thing, is that uh, we're not going to stop this. Uh, there's no way it can be stopped. The only thing that we can do is inform people. So that was basically my, uh, my comment. Well, where do you think all this is going? And what is the point of giving Al-Qaeda, under all these new names, 400 Stinger missiles? What it's, Alex, what it's about is, you see, in order to understand what's taking place in current events today, we must keep our eye on Israel and what's going to take place there, because this all ties into biblical prophecy as to bringing this, because, you know, God is not going to allow this thing to go on forever, and his prophetic time clock is winding down. This is bringing us up to Ezekiel chapter 38, the battle of Gog and Magog, and the other nations, Gomer and all of her bands, which is Germany, the European Union, and so forth, they are marching towards this in order to bring in, to facilitate a new world order, a one world government, mm -hmm. which is satanically controlled. I, I agree with you. God bless you. I appreciate your call. You know, I'm sorry to Jay and Michael and others. Tosh, you've got about a minute for closing comments. Thank you so much. Okay, well, I'll, uh, okay, I'm going to close up real fast here. Uh, this was exposed on your program, if you want to call it that, uh, uh, th three years ago. 
it has now been uh, vetted and confirmed. Um, as far as uh, Hillary Clinton, um, in my personal opinion, uh, if they're going to put uh, other people in jail that have done a lot less than her uh, because of emails, then uh, she should be in, she should be indicted. Uh, no, no question about that. As far as the gun and arms deal, it's going to continue. Like the gentleman just said, it's been going on for over 30 years. I've been involved in one way or another with this for all damn near all my life. Uh, the only reason I'm out public is to protect my butt. That's all. I was, I'm not out here making any money off this, doing that, something like that. I wish I had a couple of Stinger missiles to sell right now. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm not any different than them. You know, so there we are. Uh, you know, so anyway, God bless you. Got uh, all your listeners. I, I mean, I, if I can help, if I was I'm there, that's the reason I opened up the Facebook page is to bring all this information together into one place so that you, the public, can decipher it and vet it and then try to do something about it. Well, Tosh, great job it. exposing this because this is really important. I mean, it'd be one thing if somebody sold Stinger missiles to a friendly government. You don't sell them to Al Qaeda. It's completely evil, and it shows how crazy the elite are. Nightly news tonight's going to be big. Thank you, Tosh. Great job, crew. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Seven o'clock central. Prison Planet.